Being at home full time with kids during this pandemic can be a challenge. For parents of children with special needs, those challenges can be multiplied. For the Colson Center, I'm John Stone Street. This is Breakpoint. The COVID-19 pandemic has given rise to all kinds of I'm trapped at home with my kids and I'm going out of my mind memes and more than a few articles that would fall into the first world problems category. Now, I'm not saying there aren't challenges, of course, as one of the more helpful memes puts it with a wistful Forrest Gump looking into space. And just like that, no one ever asks what stay at home moms do all day ever again. One group of parents we should especially keep in mind during this time is the group least likely to constantly remind us what they're going through. If for no other reason, they're simply too busy. And I'm talking of parents of children with autism or other developmental disabilities. With most, if not all, special education programs and services suspended indefinitely, these parents are even busier than usual. Many of us haven't fully thought through what makes special education, well, so special. The goal of special education is to help individuals with special needs achieve a higher level of personal self-sufficiency and success. While that includes certain academic subjects, those with developmental disorders need to learn essential skills that other children can often learn simply by imitating parents or peers, including basic social skills. Consider something as simple as looking at someone when they speak to you. There's a kind of self-awareness and an ability to acknowledge another's presence that's taken for granted in this basic social habit. And this habit is an essential part of so many other skills that can so dramatically impact and even improve one's social life. A colleague of mine has a son with autism, and he marvels at how his son went from ignoring other people to greeting them and now even sticking out his hand expecting a handshake. Another incredibly helpful skill to learn is how to cope with sensory overload. This defining aspect of autism is why so many children on the spectrum tend to be anxious or retreat into distinct behaviors, such as rocking or flicking their fingers. Simply put, they're just trying to turn the volume down in the world. Though parents are, of course, essential to helping their children learn these skills, It often takes special training to learn how to teach these skills to those with unique challenges. So many parents rely on the sorts of programs that have not been available since the start of this pandemic. Even more, these programs often provide consistency to those who often feel so much safer with a routine. Children with Down syndrome present different kinds of challenges that also require the training and expertise of others that many parents rely on. In addition to losing these services, studies indicate that respiratory tract infections, both viral and bacterial, do appear more common in young people with Down syndrome. Now imagine the anxiety and stress being felt by parents of these kids right now in the age of COVID-19. Finally, there's the fact that for many parents, the time their kids spend at school offers a necessary respite from an extraordinarily difficult and stressful life. Though they love and serve their children, during this time, they've lost some necessary downtime. So what can we do to help? First, of course, and most importantly, we should pray for these families. Keep in mind that not only are they carrying a heavy load, but right now they're offering a powerful and unique witness about the sanctity and dignity of all human life. Their witness is especially important at this time in a culture where so many are left out of the categories of human dignity. All over the world, people with Down syndrome are targeted in utero for elimination through selective abortion. And of course, if a genetic test were ever developed to determine autism or any number of other conditions, those children would also be under increased threat as well. Second, we should ask the parents we know in these situations how we can help them. Something as simple as running an errand or grocery shopping can make a huge difference since getting out of the house is far more difficult for them than it is for the rest of us. And don't underestimate the power of simply calling and asking a parent how they're doing. One of the most challenging parts of being the parent of a child with special needs, as I am told, is how very isolating it often feels. There isn't much time or energy, much less opportunity for any kind of a social life. I have it from a few very good sources that they would appreciate you just letting them know that you're thinking about them. As I said, most of these parents aren't going to spend the limited time and energy they have to call and complain to us about what they're going through. So it's up to us to let them and others know that their tremendous and heroic efforts aren't going unnoticed. For Breakpoint, I'm John Stone Street.